Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Webs from SlideNerd here. As usual, I'm gonna talk about storage for now. We are gonna see how we can store files in the Android's internal storage or you can say the primary memory of your phone. So what kind of data can be stored? It can be data that your app has generated. It can be images or PDF or text files that you downloaded from the internet and so on and so forth. So let's see how the concept relate to internal storage in this video and then in the next video we can take a look at a small simple sweet working example. So let's get started. Step 1. Internal storage is all about storing files from your app to the storage. You can write data, you can read data. Now that data can be accessed only by your application and your current user. Now if you guys remember the later versions of Android after 4.0 or 4.3 which I'm not sure about they have a guest mode the user in the guest mode cannot see those files so going ahead when the app is uninstalled these files are automatically removed as well so that is one good thing that you have about internal storage so here you're supposed to keep data which is private to your app now let's see exactly how the internal storage stuff works the files are stored inside a directory which is actually data slash data slash the package name slash files and we'll be seeing this in the next video when we work on this. The other apps and the users cannot browse your internal directories and hence they do not have read-write access unless your files are explicitly readable or writable. Now you have the option to give options as, as to how the files can be accessed and by whom. Like for example you can say the files should be readable by everybody and in that case they will be. Or you can say the files should be private to your app and yes they will be. So here you can use mode private for your files on the internal storage making it accessible only to your app. Now remember internal storage is the best when you want to make sure that neither the user nor the apps can access the files which means only your app is doing or working with those files internally. So let's take a look at how internal storage works. So you have your app to store the file you call open file output method for which you specify two things one is the file name second is the mode. Now like I mentioned the mode can be private which means it cannot be read by others or the mode can be append which means keep adding data to the existing contents. Now remember by default when you say mode private every time you try to commit a new write to the file it will actually override whatever was there already. What, which means if I already had the text dog inside and I tried to put cat inside the dog, dog will be erased and then cat will be put. But if you say mode append there will be dog and after that there will be cat so you guys can clearly understand the difference between both now remember open file output gives you a reference to file input stream which means you can write binary data from your app to the file system through the file input stream and now that data can be stored inside this file which is data.txt in our case and then to read the file you can say open file input which gives you a file input stream now again the file name that you use to write should be the same as the file name that you're trying to read from, right? Otherwise, you're gonna end up reading something that doesn't exist or garbage, in other words. So now, you wanna read the file. Again, the same concept applies. You're gonna read bytes over here from your file system inside your app. Now, it is your responsibility to convert the bytes into characters as needed. For example, in your app, you may have a password or a username, which is basically a string. And what you can write is a byte. So you have to convert the string to bytes and then write those bytes. Same way you read those bytes, you convert them back to a string and you read them. So this is how file storage works. So now let's see something else about file storage, a simple example. So I'll say file name is mytext.txt and then I say the text that I want to write to the file is hello world. Now in the real world scenario, this string will be probably downloaded from the internet or it will be generated by your application through some edit text or some kind of input. So now let's see what we do. So the first step is to say file output stream FOS or whatever you call it. For the object you say open file output. You specify two things. One the file name. Two the mode in which you want to read. So here I'm saying that I want to read this privately which means no, no one else should be able to read the data that I have here. Then I simply say string dot get bytes which is nothing but this hello world text in characters converted into a byte array. Now why would I do this? Like I mentioned earlier, file output stream is capable of writing only byte oriented data. So go below and I will say file oriented stream that is our FOS output stream dot 
right and I will give the name of the buffer that we used here above and then ultimately I will close now it's very important that you close your input and output streams now if you guys are from a Java background you know this very well I don't have to explain but otherwise I'll be talking about file IO in a lot more detail in my Java videos on my object oriented Java playlist so hopefully if you guys are catching up with that that'll be good for you so let's get started further and find out what can be done so our example is gonna be pretty simple there's gonna be a save button and there's gonna be a next button so some data is gonna be generated here inside main activity when I click save it's gonna be put inside the internal storage when I click load it's gonna be loaded to our activity B or second activity and the data will be contained inside this file one or any file with some name over there and that data will be finally displayed inside our activity B so this is the simple example that we're gonna work out and here you guys will under exactly understand how file input stream and output stream combine together to put data and get the data so in the next video let's work this example out in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below and I'll catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching have a nice day